Welcome back to another video folks. Uh, this is actually a video about T-34s. There's a lot going on here but I'm taking some photographs so I thought I would take the opportunity to do the video at the same time. Now this is just some of the T-34s that I have recently completed. I've had this 21 tank box set for about six years at least I think. Um, it was when they moved over to resin and plastic components as opposed to resin and metal components. I never ever got around to it because I knew there would be so much work involved in, in painting them, certainly the way I paint them, with modulation and all the highlighting and, and weathering and such lights. Um, but I finally got them done. This has got uh, 10 plus the Commissar here. I'm going to show you them all together once I've finished this little um, uh, little photography shoot. So I'll just take a seat. I'll have a quick look around. Hopefully the lighting's okay. So you can see the, the modulation on the hull's not too shiny. I get the feeling that it's a little bit on the shiny side. There you go, just turn the light down a bit. So you can see here I've done a bit of modulation. Once I've got all the tanks out together I will show you what colours I used. So I can see better from this side the lights not so direct. Um, now let's see I'll take some tank riders off so you can maybe get a peek. The engine covers they've got some modulation on them too and the hatches, the turrets, the barrel. So basically trying to do a bit of modulation right away across the board with these guys. Try and give them shape because they're nice angular um, vehicles. So you can really accentuate the shape with a bit of shading and highlighting. Now they had a pin wash, an enamel pin wash. But then I also used some um, pigments as you can see mainly on the running board and around features on the turrets. That helps give it a bit of shape and a bit of weathering and doesn't go completely over the top of the pigments either, because that's a real danger. You can just slap it on and then you're just not getting off again. And you can see some of them have got the front fenders missing and I've used some Vallejo Earth effects with some pigments. That just represents a bit of mud that's been building up. And there's the Commissar. I don't know if there'll be a actual Commissar tank in version 4. Probably not, but um, it'll make a good command tank. Uh, now, this box of 21 T-34s also had 21 of each turret type. So not only was it a lot of tanks to paint, but it was a hell of a lot of turrets. To paint that's one reason why it took me so long to get around to it. But there's a nice like battle scene that'll take some pictures off. For nasty 88. Start to make an impression. Rolling out the welcome mat. But I'll move it over to show you all of them together. And all the turrets sitting beside them as well, just to give you an idea of how much painting is involved in 21 T-34s. Okay, so here is 21 T-34s and 42 turrets. It looks quite a lot and it certainly felt like a lot when I was painting it, especially as I was uh, careful to do modulation and shading and highlighting on all of them. It's, you know, it's a big job. Somebody said just spray the whole lot, you know, get a spray can, but you know, I'm only going to paint them once. So I'm going to paint them as well as I can and that's them done. I've got two different platoons here. They are identified by the numbers 1 to uh, 10 and 11 to 20 
and that's on the 85s. The um, 76 turrets I've got red or white stars and then you can see the, the nice Commissar turret. That flag is uh, sculpted onto the tank. There's lots of elements that are sculpted on to these resin hulls. You can see crates and tarps and satchels and uh, all kind of things. There's even a, an, an unditching log. You can see it around the other side of that tank there. So there's a lot going on, which was once again more painting, uh, but it meant I didn't have to worry about adding storage. It was already there. Mm, now then, uh, I shall get. I forgot to get the paints out. I'll get the paints out in just a second and just show you what I used um, for the shade, mid color, highlight, and then for the uh, the chipping color. Now you can see the pigment powder. I prepared a wash and then applied it to the fenders, to the rear of the fenders as well, and the front. Now when you're applying a wash of pigments and you're going to be putting a matte coat over the top of it, the matte coat is going to obscure some of the pigment. So there's a degree of experimentation required to see how much you need to put on. If you can only just see it before you put the matte coat on, then you're not going to see it after the matte coat. But once you've sealed it with the matte coat, you're going to be stuck with what you've got. So you just got to be careful. You can always add a bit more on top if you've not put enough on, you know. Um, so think about it carefully, guys. Don't go over the top. What I would say is what you can see here is probably about 80% of what I put on, if that makes sense. You know, so it's maybe about a sort of 26% reduction in the visible pigment. But there you go, folks. I've now got a army of T-34s at long, 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 long last. So I can have some proper Soviet tank lists, not just infantry lists. And I am also so very, very, very relieved that they're all done. So I'll just get those uh, paints out and I'll just talk you through them. Okay, folks, here we go. So, the shade colour is German Camo Dark Green. Then, Medium Olive, that's your main colour. Then, German Camo Bright Green. And those three, the, the hull colours, are sort of modulation, so to speak. Let's see if I can get... So you can see on the, the hull here. Now, that was all airbrushed on, but the, the highlight I also applied that's the camo, the German camo, bright green. I also applied some by, um, by brush. It's kind of like a soft blending towards the top of the panels, along the edges of panels, as well as actual direct um, edge highlighting. I, I put that on as a soft uh, blend. And where here's the thing: when you're spraying, especially when you're spraying this medium olive on, when you're putting a um, paint on by an airbrush, it's not going on as thick as a brush. So you've really got to stop, think, have a look and make sure you've got the coverage you want. Especially in the first batch I was finding I'd left too much shade colour. This one here's probably got a little bit too much shade colour. But I, it meant I've had to do some brush work with the medium olive um, and fading off some of the shade colour. So just be careful. You just want to leave, leave a little bit of shade. Medium olive here is my main colour, that's what I want to see most of and then some bright green on the, the topmost features of the panels and if I can get this so it's not grossly shining, hold on a second, I'll try moving the light a bit not helping 
Uh, it's actually quite late today, but um, there we go. You can see here um, the shading on the engine deck and the camel bright green was used at this end, working its way towards the shade colour. And then the chipping, you can see there's a bit of chipping on these guys. It's also helped helping with the edge highlighting. That's been done with the uh, Panzer Aces Splinter Blotches 1. Uh, but basically I just needed a, a bright green that was a bit different from the hull colour because the bright green highlight was already really quite bright, if that makes sense. So I wanted to see the scratches and that's why I went with that. And then German Camo Black Brown is a dark uh, core colour for the, um, the deeper scratches. So there you go guys, thank goodness I've got these finished. You might even see them in the game soon. Okay, thanks for watching, any questions give me a shout and please like and subscribe because I'll try and keep these videos coming.